Okay, this is part two of this tutorial. Be sure to watch part one if you haven't already, and hopefully I remember to put an annotation to the first video right here. Okay. If not, it will also be in the description. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned a lot. Here's the rest of the tutorial. We've got our xorg set up, but now we need to set it so one xorg starts up and our script starts up when the computer is booted. So real quick, let's... Um, we also want to look into uh, changing if you hit uh, control alt left or right, you can still uh, see other desktop uh, workspaces. We still have to edit our menu here, remove some stuff we don't want. And if you hit uh, your control alt and um, an F key, you can, see, you can still get to your TTYs. We want to turn those off. Even though they're logged out, we don't want someone flipping over to them when that's not necessary for this. So let's um, exit back into our, uh, out of our X org and into our TTY. And what we're going to do is now we're going to look at our um, RC file. Now this is gonna be one of those things, I'm gonna do it one way and I know some viewers are gonna tell me I'm doing it wrong because I like to throw everything into the rc.local file and that's not technically correct. <laughs> um, so, but I'm gonna do it that way anyway because that's how I do it. So, um, like I said, I not, may not be doing everything the best way, but it will work. So, vim uh, forward slash etc forward slash rc local. And this is a script that will run as root when the computer is booting up. Right now there's really nothing in here but an exit command for it. And what we want to do is we're going to add in um, su tux, which is our regular user, because we don't want this running, we don't want our user logged in as root. So we're gonna run them as tux and then a command and we're just going to say start x. Once again, this is how I'm going to start up start x. Really, there's a lot of different RC files, and this is not the, I'm sure, the proper way of doing it, but this is how we're going to do it. So now, if I type in reboot and hit enter, our virtual machine will shut down and then restart. And I'm probably going to pause this for a second just to save time. You don't have to see the full boot process. And here we go. Our computer booted into uh, xorg as our regular user Tux and started up our uh, web browser that we created. Um, so uh, that part's done. Uh, now let's look at, oops. Let's look at um, getting rid of some of the things in this menu here. Gonna exit back out to our command prompt. And I'm gonna log back in as root. Once again, don't forget to give yourself a pretty secure password on a machine that people might be using. And uh, at this point, we're going to now look at a file. We're gonna edit it, vim uh, xdg open box and there there's a menu.xml and if you scroll through here you'll see all the items listed out that are in that menu uh, and we don't need all these so we don't want a regular user having access to a terminal so we'll delete the three lines for that application uh, it's up to you whether you leave the web browser but let's change it to be our web browser so I'll just say web.py and then we don't need um, the open box config, so we can delete the three lines for that. And they don't need to have the reconfigure option, which wasn't working anyway because it's not set up. Um, it's up to you whether you leave the restart, which will restart our uh, window manager, and then an exit button. Uh, once again, you can remove those if you want. I'm just going to leave them in there for now because we're still working on it, but you'll probably, you don't want regular users to be able to exit out of the program, out of the desktop environment, uh, and shut down the machine. So we'll just leave. I'm going to leave that now, but you'll probably want to remove those. So I'll save that. 
And if I start X, and also since we are editing the open box uh, files that are in the ECT uh, uh, folder, and we haven't copied them to our home directory, these will take effect for all our users. So if we added new users later on, they'll be using these settings as well. But if you add the uh, these to the proper uh, subfolder of your home directory, you can have different settings for each user. Um, so here we go, I'm gonna start X up now. And as you can see here, our web browser started off. If I hit uh, Control-Alt, uh, right, once I click into the virtual machine here, <laughs> we, uh, you see that our web browser options here, oh, I didn't remove the uh, desktop option here, that's another thing you can remove, but all the other things, the X terminal are, are all removed, so now I can, the only thing they can really do is switch desktops and open up a, another web browser, so now you have one on desktop one and one on desktop two, and obviously I said you'll probably want to remove the restart and exit buttons but since we're still working on it, I'm leaving those there. Next thing we wanna look at is, as I said, you can still hit uh, Control, Alt, uh, F1, F2, F3, uh, like so, to get to your different TTYs. Let's disable those uh, and a few other things. And what we're gonna go into is we're going to edit a file called uh, ECT, uh, Init tab, and right here we have things like um, what happens when Control Alt Delete is pressed. It will run the shutdown command. Uh, we can probably comment that out. So just add a little pound symbol there so that the user can hit Control Alt Delete to shut down the computer, or you can change what happens when they press Control Alt Delete. Um, if you want to add another option there, there's other power management options in here. And then right here, these are TTYs. So what we can do is, and this won't take effect till you restart the machine. Um, I believe we could probably remove them all. Don't think that will cause a problem. Hopefully not. Uh, let's see what else, and you got a few other options here, but that, that's mainly what we wanted to look at here. So when you restart the computer, they won't be able to control alt up into other TTYs, which would be, like I said, not necessarily a bad thing because they would still be logged out and they wouldn't be able to uh, log in. Um, but you don't want someone to control alt F2 and then walk away and leave your kiosk at a TTY that no one can use. So we'll save that. Uh, next, we're going to edit one more file in our etc xdg open box. And there is a file in here called rc.xml. And this is a list of stuff, basically settings for open box. Um, you can set different settings for the fonts and, and, and size of toolbars and stuff like that. Really don't have any of that, but there are settings in here uh, for disabling those different workspaces. If you did use Firefox or Chrome rather than creating your own web browser, uh, you may want to change the settings to remove the X and the minimize and the maximize options. Um, in here, or if you have other applications you're gonna have running besides a web browser. Uh, these are just basically all the window manager options in here. Uh, I'm not gonna get into them too much, I just wanted to show you this file. Um, read through, it's pretty self-explanatory. One thing I am going to disable, uh, let's see, and here are our settings, our key bindings for changing workspaces. So after removing those from the, the key bindings for that, they wouldn't be able to get to the other workspaces. Um, but then right here, here's an important one, Alt F4. That's how I closed the web browser before. Um, and you can completely disable that. What I'll do is I'll just show you how it works. I'll just change that from Alt F4 to Alt dash, uh, A dash, capital A dash, lowercase Q, which means Alt and then the Q key. Now if I save that and I start X up, now I can't hit Alt F4. It does nothing as far as closing that window. I can be tap, 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 nothing. But if I Alt-Q, it will close it. So uh, you may want to think of 
uh, as maintenance use, you may want to change, uh, you know, to make, create custom keys for you to log in. But at the same time, bear off just disabling them all together. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else we need to go over here, but that's the basics of creating a, a uh, kiosk system for web browsing. Once again, um, uh, I'm not going to get into some things like host files. I'm sure anyone who's uh, uh, somewhat familiar with the Linux operating system or any Unix-based operating system, and Windows actually has it too, it's just in a different space, the host file where you can redirect. If someone types in google.com, you can redirect them to another page. Um, uh, but one of the nice things about using the WebKit and this Python script, and as you'll see uh, in the coming weeks on, uh, on Fridays, I do my Python tutorials, I'll be doing a lot more on WebKit. And you can have it look at links that you click on, uh, and you can have it say when a uh, uh, link is clicked on on the web page, check it if it says this or contains this, do this or that, and then if it doesn't contain that, uh, don't do anything or redirect them to another page. So if you didn't want people to leave, let's say I'm here at Films by Chris and I have links in here to uh, other stuff. So there's no web address bar, which you can add one to the WebKit as well if you wanted to give them that option. Um, but uh, it all depends on what, how much uh, you want to give power you want to give the user. Um, because you can just add yourself a little Google search bar on a site and then you have control over where they're going or you can add an address bar that they can go to and you can check, you know, if I want them to stay at Films by Chris, even though I have links to like YouTube on here, you can have your Python script check and say, okay, does this, is this a Films by Chris link? If not, do nothing or give error message or redirect them. So that's it. using the WebKit with Python and GTK, as I was saying, just basically gives you a whole lot more power, which we're not going over in this tutorial, but keep watching my Python videos on Fridays. I plan on hitting a lot more of, on it in the coming weeks. So I hope you learned something uh, new about your Linux system. I learned a few things about OpenBox, and um, I've never really messed with the uh, etc init tab folder or file before, so I learned a few things there. And um, I just wanted to share this with you in case uh, I can help you uh, in the right direction for creating one of your projects. So thanks for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be links in the description to this video. And I just hope that you continue watching my videos in the future. Learn a lot more about Python, WebKit, open source, and Linux. And I just hope that you have a great day.